Along the line, I came across some people. Along the line. And I'll preach before this conference is over. There are a people God should never allow your path to cross. A people you must never meet. Because they neither belong to your past, your present, or your future. They can't, they can't, they can't accommodate anything about you. You don't belong. I met these people. Relationship in the first place was an error. These were people who had no discipline of an official university education. None. Zero. The best was halfly educated. Mid-level. Rest secondary school. Drop out. So the, the discipline of life. How you face life with discipline. Zero. Where there was zero financial discipline. No difference between church money or God's money. Where pastor's wife can go straight from the with offering money in the market to buy things. Since this ministry started, the checkbook of this church has never been in my possession once. Can never be. I never believe that church money belongs to the pastor. And any pastor here who is eating the church money or taking the tithes, you need to repent. Then zero marital family life. Zero. Where you can have pastor's wife shouting on, 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 on husband. In front of everybody. Question is, what am I, what is, what is this? Mindset different. Lifestyle different. Focus different. Principles of life different. Every single thing different. On your marks, get set. Move. When I begin to draw the lessons at the end, there are things you must never manage any association. Even for two days, if you notice that principles are different. If you notice principles are different. Take your seat. And here, I met Papa Yedeko physically, like I said. He anointed my head with oil. And then, when ministry was six months, we were just building from the scratch. He passed to Abuja six months. He passed there. I asked him to anoint the ground. Sir, we are building. He poured oil on the ground and said, building, grow. Within seven weeks, we were under the roof. May God connect you with oil that produces results with speed. May God connect you with oil that produces results with speed. If you are saying amen, say loud amen. He poured the oil on the ground. Building grew. Roof came. And our relationship continued. Please take your seat. By 1998, our ministry was only two years old when he appointed me a member of the board of ministers on his board. Charismatic Bible Faith Ministries. CBFM, you know it. You were there. I was there with Pastor David Ebi and me. We were all on the, same, on the same board. He appointed us at the same time. Two years. At times I begin to wonder, what did this man see in my life at such an age of ministry? In that same year, we broke the ground for Faith Tabernacle. Under one year, Faith Tabernacle was built. We were there in 1999. 
to declare the 50,000 seat auditorium, 1999, to dedicate it. I drove round with him. Look at it right there. I drove round with him in the foundation. Drove round with him in the construction. Drove round when the building wasn't roofed yet. So it was clear to me that this was achievable. What you see determines what you can dare. I saw the process. And then 1998 came. 1999, first Shiloh. There have been 25 Shilohs this year. I have not missed one. I want you to understand something about followership. I have not missed one. Every schedule is scheduled away from it. In that 1998, he had a minister's conference and he invited a couple of people. In that minister's conference, I met a man, Archbishop. Bishop Charles Ajinasari is now Archbishop. And he preached with fire and gave a very, very rugged testimony. How he went to India and so on and so forth. And no, deep, call it unto the deep. He was talking supernatural. And supernatural is my passion. So I, we, I drew close. When I watched his ministration the first time, it didn't take time for healings to happen. Without a doubt, there was a sharpening. He made me to minister in his, he invited me in 1999 to minister in Tamale in northern Ghana. And then I have ministered um, in only five churches in the world on a Sunday morning. His own is one of it. On a Sunday morning. There's nothing you can do for me to minister on a Sunday morning. I am mentioning it so you can know that there are relationships that are profitable. As against those that are complete, are useless. <laughs> I will come to him later when I talk about Maurice Cerullo. Because when Dr. Maurice Cerullo came to, to Ghana, he said, Pastor Paul, I'd like you to meet Maurice Cerullo. So for the first time, he made myself and Maurice Cerullo to meet. All right, so, and then shortly after that, my father in the Lord appointed me this will be almost 20 years now as a member of the board of regents of the Covenant University. University board. 25 years now. Member of the board of regents, the first and second. Right. And it was first and second boards. It was such an experience. Such an experience. That was the path that I took with our Father and the Lord. Before this conference started, we are together on Monday where he prayed for the conference. It's a relationship of consistency for over 31 years. Papa Yedeko came for my daughter's wedding. That one is a, is a constant. He came for my daughter's wedding. Visited me when my mother passed, personally. Rehad Bonke was coming to Makodi for crusade. My sister here, was the protocol committee chairperson for that crusade. And she said to me, Rehabonki will be coming and landing in Abuja. Can you help me pick him from the airport? I said, help. I should be thanking you for giving me such a privilege. So I organized protocol. We picked Bunky from the airport and then he is to pass one night in Abuja before going to Makodi. I received him from the airport straight to Sheraton Hotel where we booked for him. He lodged overnight. The next day, when he was going to go to Makodi, I was meant to go with them, but I decided not to go. I gave him an offering in foreign currency, in dollars, and then gave him a wristwatch. My mentality was, this man is on time. 
I want to be on time. And I said, pray for me, sir. I knelt down. He laid his hands on me. And he said, Father, whatever you felt on the cross of Calvary, before you sent your son Jesus to die, give him a portion of it. Jesus, what you felt on the cross while you were dying for the world, how your heart was, give him a little of that heart. Before then, I had experienced some, some manifestations, but there were dimensions of manifestations I was not seeing, no matter how hard I prayed or fasted. So he laid hands on me. Power. And when they went to go, I told the hotel, the room service, what do you call them? Potters. Housekeeping. I told the housekeeping, don't change the bed spread. Don't go to the room. Don't clean anything. Just leave it the way it is. I dived into that bed where he lay. I was in tongues for the next 10 to 11 hours, non-stop. Father, whatever grace laid on this bed, whatever grace laid on this bed, overnight, I connect. I connect. Whatever grace. As I prayed almost 12 hours, I, I became dizzy like I was falling asleep. In between that junction of sleep and awake, I had a very drastic miracle encounter. A, a, an encounter that was clear that there was a, a transmission of a miraculous dimension of the supernatural. I saw raw like a creative miracle. Then I got up, slept back, Continue the prayer. By the time it was daybreak, and I knew I had received what I wanted, I followed them to Makodi, joined them in the crusade. And then, our relationship continued. Whenever Bonky was coming, he knows, I will wait for him at the airport, receive him. So anytime we go to Ghana today, and John Dako is in Ghana, he will wait for us at the airport. Till tomorrow. I said, why? He said, when Bunky was alive, you always came to receive us at the airport. I now have to receive you. Bunky was in Abuja crusade. I was a prayer committee chairman. They said all the committees should bring their budget. I said, budget for what? Budget to pray. Pastor Abba was with me in that committee. I said, do you people want budget? Do you need money for the prayer? They said, no. Because they can't look at my eyes and say yes. And he will not say, say yes because we are together. No way. Anything you need, I will provide it from my pocket. I will give you the drinks. We don't need a dime from Bunker. I will, will give you, provide everything which we did. On the crusade ground, in Abuja crusade, Bunker went to the altar to preach, brought out his hand and showed me. What is this? He said, see the watch you gave me. He was wearing the watch. Of all the watches in the world. And then when Bonke was about to pass, he met him. Please tell us what he said. Your experience with him. Is this story doing anything to you? He, we were in America for our conference. Director's conference. And uh, at the end of it, he sent a message to us that he would like to meet myself and my wife in his house. So we drove three hours to Palm Beach. That was where he was staying. Went up, we met him, and uh, we had uh, quite a lot of um, prayer and singing. It was wonderful. But, but he said we should have a meal. So whilst we sat at the table, he, he showed me a watch on his hand and asked me, John, do you remember the one who gave me this watch? I said, ah, Pastor Bonke. We have so many pastors in Africa. How can I remember who gave you this watch? I said, oh, you've forgotten. This is from Pastor Paul. This was... Yeah, it's a good point to give a, put your hands together for Jesus. So this was given to him by Pastor Paul. 
in Abuja. And I remember that, that incident. Then everything, I recollected everything. And then he said, when I go back, when I go back to Africa, I should return Pastor Paul. If you will not meet again here, you will meet him in heaven. <laughs> 